proud of the tigress that cannot be contained by any skin. Every jarkle spills and makes the earth more shining, as though covered in satin. If the man had seen even a tributary of the great river, he wouldn't have brought the innocence of his gift. Those that stay and live by the tigers grow so ecstatic that they throw rocks at the jugs, and the jugs become perfect. They shatter, the pieces dance, and water. Can you see? Neither jar, nor water, nor stone, nothing. You knock at the door of reality, shake your god wings, loosen your shoulders, and open. 200. Z9 King. Jesus Poems. The Population of the World. On Jesus. There's a strong connection between Jesus and Rumi. I'm told a Christian church in Shiraz, Iran, has a quatrain from Rumi carved in stone over its door. Where Jesus lives, the great hearted gather. We are a door that's never locked. If you are suffering any kind of pain, stay near this door. Open it. A sweet inclusiveness and healing mercy are felt around both. The friendship of Rumi and Shams has no parallel in the great aloneness of Jesus' life, but the relationship with children and with society's outcasts is very similar. Rumi showed deep consideration for the least recognized members of his 13th century Muslim small town. He would always stop to bow to children and old women, to bless and be blessed by them. One day an Armenian butcher, a Christian, was passing. Rumi stopped in the road and bowed seven times to him. Another day he came upon children playing a game. He acknowledged each as he would have an adult. And there was one little boy far away running across the field. Wait, I'm coming. Rumi stayed till the boy had come close, bowed, and been bowed to. I called for your door, the mystics are gathering in the street. Come out. Leave me alone, I'm sick. 201. I don't care if you're dead. Jesus is here, and he wants to resurrect somebody. Jesus on the lean donkey. Jesus on the lean donkey. This is an emblem of how the rational intellect should control the animal soul. Let your spirit be strong like Jesus. If that heart becomes weak, then the worn out donkey grows to a dragon. Be grateful when what seems unkind comes from a wise person. Once, a holy man, riding his donkey, saw a snake crawling into a sleeping man's mouth. He hurried, but he couldn't prevent it. He hit the man several blows with his club. The man woke terrified and ran beneath an apple tree with many rotten apples on the ground. Eat, you miserable wretch. Eat, why are you doing this to me? Eat more, you fool. I've never seen you before. Who are you? Do you have some inner quarrel with my soul? The wise man kept forcing him to eat, and then he ran him. For hours he was the poor man and made him run. Finally, at nightfall, full of rotten apples, fatigued, bleeding, he fell and vomited everything, the good and the bad, the apples and the snake. 202. When he saw that ugly snake come out of himself, he fell on his knees before his assailant. Are you Gabriel? Are you God? I bless the moment you first noticed me. I was dead and didn't know it. You've given me a new life. Everything I've said to you was stupid. I didn't know. If I had explained what I was doing, you might have panicked and died of fear. Muhammad said, 
If I describe the enemy that lives inside men, even the most courageous will be paralyzed. No one would go out, or do any work. No one would pray or fast, and all power to change would fade from human beings, so I kept quiet while I was beating you, that like David the first might shape iron, so that, impossibly, I might put feathers back into a bird's wing. God's silence is necessary, because of humankind's faint-heartedness. If I had told you about the snake, you wouldn't have been able to eat, and if you hadn't eaten, you wouldn't have vomited. I saw your condition and drove my donkey heart into the middle of it, saying always under my breath, Lord, make it easy on him. I wasn't permitted to tell you, and I wasn't permitted to stop feeding you. The healed man, Still kneeling, I have no way to thank you for the quickness of your wisdom and the strength of your guidance. God will thank you. 203. What Jesus runs away from. The son of Mary, Jesus, hurries up a slope as though a wild animal were chasing him. Someone following him asks, where are you going? No one is after you. Jesus keeps on, saying nothing, across two more fields. Are you the one who says words over a dead person, so that he wakes up? I am. Did you not make the clay birds fly? Yes. Who then could possibly cause you to run like this? Jesus slows his pace. I say the great name over the deaf and the blind, they are healed. Over a stony mountainside, and it tears its mantle down to the navel. Over non-existence, it comes into existence. But when I speak lovingly for hours, for days, with those who take human warmth and mock it, when I say the name to them, nothing happens. They remain lost, or turn to sand, where no plants can grow. Other diseases are ways for mercy to enter, but this non-responding breeds violence and coldness toward God. I am fleeing from that. As little by little air steals water, the phrase dries up and evaporates with foolish people who refuse to change. Like cold stone you sit on a cynic steals body heat. He doesn't feel the sun. Jesus wasn't running from actual people. He was teaching in a new way. Christ is the population of the world, and every object as well. There is no room for hypocrisy. Why use bitter soup for healing when sweet water is everywhere? 204. There's nothing ahead. Lovers think they're looking for each other, but there's only one search. Wandering this world is wandering that, both inside one transparent sky. In here there is no dogma and no heresy. The miracle of Jesus is himself, not what he said or did about the future. Forget the future, I'd worship someone who could do that. On the way you may want to look back, or not, but if you can say there's nothing ahead, there will be nothing there. Stretch your arms and take hold of cloth of your clothes with both hands. The cure for pain is in the pain. Good and bad are mixed. If you don't have both, you don't belong with us. When one of us gets lost, is not here, he must be inside us. There's no place like that anywhere in the world. 205. 20. 4 in Baghdad, dreaming of Cairo, more teaching stories. On Baghdad. Here are more sections from Rumi's Mathnawi, the six books of spiritual couplets he dictated to his scribe, Usum Chelebi, between 1260 and 1273. 
Rooney and Newsom would walk together around Sonia or through the vineyards of Marin nearby, letting the subjects flow into poetry. Passages from the Quran, folk tales, jokes, all intrusions were allowed swimming room in this ocean of sublime jazz that perhaps has no parallel in world literature. The Mathnui is a house of mirrors, relationship is everywhere, and everywhere we are shown ourselves. The other reveals us. Rumi's stories are full of reflections, comic janitors and stealthy maids, judges and impudent lovers who disclose our hidings and hypocrisies. The whole always throws the parts into relationship, polishing the mirrors. What we see happening in the external drama we can be sure is part of ourselves. It is said that a cow walked across the entire city of Baghdad and saw only some hay that had fallen off a wagon. Likewise, some people travel all around the world and report back that everyone tried to cheat them. In Baghdad, dreaming of Cairo, in Cairo, dreaming of Baghdad. No more muffled drums, uncover the drumheads, plant your flag in an open field. No more timid peeking around. 206. Either you see the beloved, or you lose your head. If your throat's not ready for that wine, cut it. If your eyes don't want the fullness of union, let them turn white with disease. Either this deep desire of mine will be found on this journey, or when I get back home. It may be that the satisfaction I need depends on my going away, so that when I've gone and come back, I'll find it at home. I will search for the friend with all my passion and all my energy, until I learn that I don't need to search. The real truth of existence is sealed, until after many twists and turns of the road. As in the algebraical method of the two errors, the correct answer comes only after two substitutions, after two mistakes. Then the seeker says, If I had known the real way it was, I would have stopped all the looking around. But that knowing depends on the time spent looking. Just as the shake's debt could not be paid until the boy is leaving, the story we told in book two. You fear losing a certain eminent position. You hope to gain something from that, but it comes from elsewhere. Existence is this switching trick, giving you hope from one source, then satisfaction from another. It keeps you bewildered and wondering, and lets your trust in the unseen grow. 207. You think to make your living from tailoring, but then somehow money comes in through goldsmithing, which had never entered your mind. I don't know whether the union I want will come through my effort, or my giving up effort, or from something completely separate from anything I do or don't do. I wait and fidget and flop about as a decapitated chicken does, knowing that the vital spirit has to escape this body eventually, somehow. This desire will find an opening. There was once a man who inherited a lot of money and land. But he squandered it all too quickly. Those who inherit wealth don't know what work it took to get it. In the same way, we don't know the value of our souls, which were given to us for nothing. So the man was left alone without provisions, an owl in the desert. The prophet has said that a true seeker must be completely empty like a lute to make the sweet music of Lord, Lord. When the emptiness starts to get filled with something, the one who plays the lute puts it down and picks up another. There is nothing more subtle and delightful than to make that music. 
stay empty and held between those fingers, where where gets drunk with nowhere. This man was empty, and the tears came. His habitual stubbornness dissolved. This is the way with many seekers. 208. They moan in prayer, and the perfumed smoke of that floats into heaven, and the angels say, answer this prayer. This worshipper has only you and nothing else to depend on. Why do you go first to the prayers of those less devoted? God says, by deferring my generosity I am helping him. His need dragged him by the hair into my presence. If I satisfy that, he'll go back to being absorbed in some idle amusement. Listen how passionate he is. That torn open cry is the way he should live. Nightingales are put in cages because their songs give pleasure. Whoever heard of keeping a crow? When two people, one decrepit and the other young and handsome, come into a bakery where the baker is an admirer of young men, and both of them ask for bread, the baker will immediately give what he has on hand to the old man. But to the other he will say, sit down and wait a while. There's fresh bread baking in the house, almost ready, and when the hot bread is brought, the baker will say, don't leave. The halva is coming, so he finds ways of detaining the young man with, ah, there's something important I want to tell you about. Stay, I'll be back in a moment. Something very important. This is how it is when true devotees suffer disappointment in the good they want to do, or the bad they want to avoid. So this man with nothing, who had inherited everything and squandered it, kept weeping, Lord, Lord. Finally in a dream he heard a voice, your wealth is in Cairo. Go there to such and such a spot and dig, and you'll find what you need. 9. So he left on the long journey, and when he saw the towers of Cairo, he felt his back grow warm with new courage. But Cairo is a large city, and before he could find a spot, he had to wander about. He had no money, of course, so he begged among the townspeople, but he felt ashamed doing that. He decided, I will go out at night and call like the night mendicants that people throw coins into the street for. Shame and dignity and hunger were pushing him forward and backward and sideways. Suddenly, he was seized by the night patrol. It so happened that many had been robbed recently in Cairo at night, and the Caliph had told the police to assume that anyone out roaming after dark was a thief. It's best not to let offenders go unpunished. Then they poison the whole body of society. Cut off the snake bitten finger. Don't be sympathetic with thieves. Consider instead the public suffering. In those days robbers were expert, and numerous. So the night patrol grabbed the man. I can explain. Tell me. Wait. I am not a criminal. I am new to Cairo. I live in Baghdad. He told the story of his dream and the buried treasure, and he was so believable in the telling that the night patrol man began to cry. Always. The fragrance of truth has that effect. Passion can restore healing power, and through the weary bows. 2D0. To new life. The energy of passion is everything. There are fake satisfactions that simulate passion. They taste cold and delicious, but they just distract you and prevent you from the search. They say, I will relieve your passion. Take me, take me, run from false remedies that dilute your energy. Keep it rich and musky. The night patrol said, I know you're not a thief. 
you're a good man, but you're kind of a fool. I've had that dream before. I was told, in my dream, that there was a treasure for me in Baghdad, buried in a certain quarter of the city on such and such a street. The name of the street that he said was where this man lived. And the dream voice told me, it's in so and so's house. Go there and get it. Without knowing, he had described the exact house, and mentioned this man's name. But I didn't do what the dream said to do, and look at you, who did, wandering the world, fatigued, and begging in the streets. So it came quietly to the seeker, though he didn't say it out loud, what I'm longing for lived in my house in Baghdad. He filled with joy, he breathed continuous praise. Finally he said, the water of life is here. I'm drinking it, but I had to come this long way to know it. 211. Dying, laughing. A lover was telling his beloved how much he loved her, how faithful he had been, how self-sacrificing, getting up at dawn every morning, fasting, giving up wealth and strength and fame, all for her. There was a fire in him. He didn't know where it came from, but it made him weep and melt like a candle. You've done well, she said, but listen to me. All this is the decor of love, the branches and leaves and blossoms. You must live in the room to be a true lover. Where is that? Tell me. You've done the outward acts, but you haven't died. You must die. When he heard that, he lay back on the ground laughing, and died. He opened like a rose that drops to the ground and died laughing. That laughter was his freedom, and his gift to the eternal. As moonlight shines back at the sun, he heard the call to come home, and went. When light returns to its source, it takes nothing of what it has illuminated. It may have shown on a garbage dump, or a garden, or in the center of a human eye. No matter. It goes, and when it does, the open flame becomes passionately desolate, wanting it back. 212. Human Honesty. They were outdoors in some sort of fake spiritual state, the hypocrite and his friend, the mayor. It was midnight, and raining. A wolf appeared on the edge of the hill. The mayor let fly an arrow that fell the wolf, who moaned and farted and died. The hypocrite yelled, You killed my donkey. I know my donkey farts as well as I know water from wine. Not so. I shot a wolf. Go and see. It's too dark to tell anything from here. Among twenty farts from twenty animals, I would know the wind from my young donkey. Some things I know perfectly. You imposter. In the rain, at midnight, at fifty yards, you can distinguish one fart from another. You didn't even recognize me today, and we've known each other for ten years. You're just pretending with this god drunkenness too, so I guess you'll be excused for other forgetfulnesses, as a child is, or someone truly dissolved in that joy. You're not. You're too proud of your nervous hood, and your cries of selfless surrender. Oh, both worlds are here. I can't tell which is which. My gunky parts prove the sensitivity of my state. This is the way hypocrisy gets exposed. Anyone who claims, I am the keeper of the doorway, will be tested by the adepts, as when some fellow claims to be a tailor, but when the king throws down. 213. A piece of satin and says, Make me a vest. He has no idea what to do. 
the wine god loves is human honesty. That hypocrite had been drinking buttermilk. He was saying, leave me alone in my bewilderment. I don't know a hatchet from a key. I am Janayat. I am Vestami. Spiritual sloth and spiritual greed will not stay hidden. If you pretend to be Halai and with that fake burning set fire to your friends, don't think that you're a lover. You're crazy and numb, you're drinking our blood, and you have no experience of the nearness. Dalkic's message. The king of Termin has urgent business in Samarkand. He needs a courier to go there and return in five days. He offers many rewards to anyone who will make the journey, horses, servants, gold, and the robes of honor. Dalsyuk, the court clown, is out in the country when he hears of this. He quickly mounts a horse and rides toward town. He rides furiously. Two horses drop dead of exhaustion under his whip. He arrives covered with dust at some ungodly hour, demanding an audience with the king. 214. A panic sweeps the city. What calamity could be imminent that Dalphic, the buffoon, should be so distraught? Everyone gathers at the palace. An evil omen is upon us. Something has certainly been spilled on the rug this time. The king himself was worried. What is it, Dalphic? Whenever anyone asks Dalphic for particulars about anything, he first puts his finger to his lips. Shish. Everyone gets very quiet. Dalphic makes another gesture as though to say he needs more time to catch his breath. Another long wait. No one has ever seen Dalphic like this. Usually, he's a constant stream of new jokes. Usually, the king would be laughing so hard he'd fall on the floor holding his stomach. This quietness is very odd and foreboding. Everyone's worst fears come up. The tyrant from Florism is coming to kill us. Dalphic, say what it is. I was far from the court when I heard that you needed a courier, someone who could go to Samarkand and come back in five days. Yes, I hurried here to tell you that I will not be able to do it. What? I don't have the stamina or the agility. Don't expect me to be the one. This, 215, is what you made such a commotion about. That you won't do it. Dalkit is like those who pretend to be on a brave spiritual path. The bridegroom's house is in an uproar of preparation, always making ready to receive the bride, but the girl's family knows nothing. Any message yet? No. Any sign of activity? No. Letters have been written and sent. But have any of them reached the friend? Has your inner lover read them? The cat and the meat. There once was a sneering wife who ate all her husband brought home and lied about it. One day it was some lamb for a guest who was to come. He had worked 200 days in order to buy that meat. When he was away, his wife took the kebab and ate it all, with wine. The husband returns with the guest. The cat has eaten the meat, she says. Buy more, if you have any money left. He asks a servant to bring the scales, and the cat. The cat weighs three pounds. The meat was three pounds, one ounce. If this is the cat, where is the meat? If this is the meat, where is the cat? Start looking for one or the other. 2 by 6 If you have a body, where is the spirit? If your spirit, what is the body? This is not our problem to worry about. Both 
Turbo. Corn is corn grain and corn stock. The Divine Butcher cuts a